Russian martial arts, you'll often hear instructors saying that the diaphragm is the seat of fear. It's a very common expression in many lineages and many disciplines. And the reason for that is when we get tense, the diaphragm is one of the first things to tighten up, and it's one of the first things to rob us of performance. If our diaphragm is not working correctly, we stop breathing well. If we stop breathing well, we go into a pure emotional reflexive mode. The amygdala hijacks the entire body and we're lost. And it takes us a long time to come back if we're A, not aware of that state, not familiar with that fear state, and B, we do not have any trained recovery mechanism. The more we expose ourselves to this so-called fear breath, then the more familiar it becomes. We understand the symptoms, what it feels like, where it activates our body. We become more familiar, we replace the fear with familiarity, and then as we train recovery breath, we have more skills, confidence in the recovery tool. We're not only more familiar with the fear state, but we're more able to get out of it faster and more effectively. At the beginning, we want our spine to be aware. We want to know how to inhale and breathe despite that. We don't want to breathe in a way that deforms our spine. That's it. That takes time. There are things in life, no matter how good you get, that will deform that. Then we start to look at, can we stretch our breath? Can we increase our pauses? And we gain an awareness of that, a familiarity with that. Today we're going to see that holding and pausing are kind of different. Most of us hold our breath, but we can't pause our breath. We add strain where there doesn't need to be. We start to get into the idea of sufficiency, breathing enough. We look at you know, how we can recover. We have all these notions, and we got into inspiratory resistance as well at an intermediate level. All of that work fundamentally looks to emphasize the thoracic diaphragm. Right? So the diaphragm is kind of like a jellyfish. It's a membrane right here underneath our ribs inside the body. And the first and most important realization is that most people, when we think of muscle moving, they, they intuitively, when you ask them, especially kids, if I take a breath in, how does my diaphragm move? We always, at the beginning, most people visualize it going up. But in fact, the diaphragm, is a, it's a membrane that it moves down, and by moving down, it creates more lung space, and that's what sucks the breath in. So in correct breathing, the diaphragm should always be going down, and the lungs should fill. Now we're going to move forward into an even more important element. The diaphragm connects to the vertebrae in the lower lumbar, top three, get connected by that. But more than that, it's a good term to look up. Uh, there are two ligaments, two, uh, two tendons, I believe, called the crura, right, which is Latin for legs. They look like legs, right, little, not as pale as mine, but still. And they, they run down, they attach to the vertebrae, and they attach to the diaphragm. And they run down from the thoracic diaphragm, and then what's often termed the pelvic floor is actually another membrane at the bottom. Right, that's the pelvic floor. Pelvic floor is the, is the pelvic diaphragm. And so you actually have two diaphragms working in the body. Right? And this is the key to everything. People will ask, when I'm getting punched in the stomach, should I tense it or not tense it? Should I, you know, when I'm doing a push-up, should I do this? Or how do you force this way? And it fundamentally stems from a lack of understanding. We can cognitively understand that there are two, two diaphragms that are connected. I like to think of it as an old man playing an accordion. Right? But these two diaphragms are actually connected together. So when one engages, the other one engages. Every time I inhale, that, that accordion is basically squishing together in my stomach, and that's making more lung volume, but it's also pulling up on my pelvic floor. So if I think of not engaging my tailbone, I kind of have that cow back like that, right? We know that if I inhale, I'm putting intra-abdominal pressure, and if the anus is gaping and the butt is not engaged and I get hit, it's naturally going to go out of it. Right? It's gonna, you're going to have it. But it's also a question of my structure, arching backward, stretching the crura. They're stretching the, the connective tissue. It's working against my body. If I engage my tailbone, I take strain off them, and I let them behave naturally. And that pulls the two diaphragm together. That's the way the body's supposed to be. It's not just a question of structure, bad structure creates opening. It's bad structure is fighting against diaphragmatic function. And so that's why a lot of people, when they, they start to intuitively, you get guys that have no cognitive understanding, getting intuitive understanding and better breathing, they go from shallow breath to deeper breath. But because they still have bad structure or no structural awareness, they're really only thinking of the thoracic diaphragm. And the pelvic diaphragm is not being maximized. But in actual effect, if you imagine both your diaphragms like that, as I inhale, they should be going, right? And then they should be coming out. If I try to do that with an arched back, there's a lot of tension, and it's very hard to actually feel the pelvic diaphragm. 